Hi, I'm Josh Farkasen, and this is Reading Height Measurements on a Physician Mechanical Beam Scale with Adjustable Height Rod. By the end of this lesson, you will interpret the calibration markings on the adjustable height rod of a Physician Mechanical Beam Scale, and determine the height indicated on height rods with and without the number of feet indicated on the rod. Let's begin. Here are the parts of the height rod that we will focus on today. The lower rod with the indicator line and the upper rod with the headpiece. The lower rod, also called the outer rod, is stationary and cannot be adjusted. The upper rod, also called the inner rod, is the adjustable portion of the height rod. It can be raised and lowered as needed. The headpiece, which is currently in its resting position, extends and is placed on top of the patient's head during height measurement. The indicator line is also called the read line. Some rods also include a read arrow. You will determine the patient's height by observing the indicator line and calibration markings. Here's a general overview of how the height rod works. The patient steps on the platform. Raise the height rod so the headpiece is above the patient's head. Lower the headpiece onto the patient's head. Make sure the headpiece is flat. If it is slanted downward or upward, you will produce an inaccurate result. Remember, make sure the headpiece lays flat on top of the patient's head. Now that you have a general concept of how the height rod works, we will now focus on interpreting the calibration markings on the height rod. The lower rod is generally used for those who have a standing height of less than 3 feet 4 and 3 quarter inches. Let's look at each of the calibration markings on the lower rod closely. We will focus only on the right side of the rod since our concentration is in feet and inches and not in centimeters. Notice that you have lines for feet, inches, and fractional inches. The fractional lines represent quarter, half, and three quarters. On the lower rod, the numbers increase from bottom to top. For example, here is a three foot line. This line represents 3 feet and a quarter inch. This line represents 3 feet and a half inch. And this line represents 3 feet and 3 quarters of an inch. And this line represents a height of 3 foot 1 inch. Let's practice a few. State the height in feet and inches according to the marker. If you stated 3 foot 3 inches, you are correct. Here's another. If you stated 3 foot 4 and a quarter inches, then you understand the calibrations on the bottom rod completely. Let's see if you can master the upper rod as well. Remember with the bottom rod, the numbers increase from bottom to top? Well, on the upper rod, the numbers increase from top to bottom. Let's see why this makes a difference. We will compare the fractional lines between 2 and 3 inches on the bottom rod and the top rod. On the bottom bar in the left image, the fractional line that represents the 2 and a quarter inch mark is here. The 2 and a half inch mark is here and a 2 and 3 quarters of an inch mark is here. Now on the upper bar in the right image, the fractional line that represents 2 and a quarter inches mark is here, the 2 and a half inch mark is here, and the 2 and 3 quarters of an inch mark is here. Remember, the bottom rod numbers increase from bottom to top. The upper rod numbers increase from top to bottom. The simplest way to interpret the calibration markings correctly is to observe the direction that the whole numbers are increasing. Then you will be able to interpret the fractional markings correctly. Now here's some good news. 
If you're measuring someone who is taller than the height of the bottom rod, you can ignore the numbers on the bottom rod completely and focus on the upper rod and indicator line. For the rest of this lesson, we will focus on using the upper rod and reading from the indicator line. Now that you have learned the basics, let's determine a patient's height in feet and inches. In this image, the patient's height is 5 foot 3 and a half inches. Here's how this was determined. Once the patient is on the platform with the headpiece flat on their head, follow these steps. Step 1. Find the number of feet nearest to the indicator line. In this case, it is 5 feet. Step 2. Find the nearest whole number in inches. In this case, it is 3 inches. Step 3. Find the fractional inch closest to or on the indicator line. In this case, it is in half an inch. And in step 4. Document the final result. In this case, you will document the height as 5 foot 3 and a half inches. It's your turn. What is the height indicated on the height rod? I'll leave the steps there for you for the first one. Pause the video, then play it when you're ready for the answer. If you stated 5 foot 4 and a quarter inches, you are correct. Now try it without the steps in view. What is the height indicated on the height rod? If you stated 6 foot 4 and 3 quarters of an inch, you are correct. Great job. Next, we will examine a height rod that only has the number of inches. You will notice that there are no feet calibration markings on this height rod. For this type of rod, you must know how to correctly convert the number of inches to feet and inches. To do this, you must know your multiples of 12. I strongly suggest that you know at least up to 12 times 7 without having to even think about it. As you see, a person who is 36 inches is 3 feet tall. 48 inches is 4 feet tall. 60 inches is 5 feet tall and so on. Quickly, what's 12 times 7? If you stated the answer before it appeared, great job. If not, don't worry, you just have some studying to do. Remember, commit to knowing the multiples of 12 up to 12 times 7 to memory. I say up to 7 because very few people are above 7 feet tall. Let's practice applying the multiples of 12 to measure a patient's height correctly. In this image, the height indicated is 4 feet 7 and 3 quarters of an inch. How was this determined? Here's how. Step 1. Find the whole number inches nearest to the indicator line. In this case, it is 55 inches. Step 2. Convert the whole number of inches to feet. If the patient is 55 inches tall, that means they are at least 4 feet tall. We will document the number of feet as 4 feet. Step 3. Determine the remaining whole number of inches. Since the patient is 55 inches and 48 inches equals 4 feet, there is a remainder of 7 inches. Document this in your answer. So far, we know that the patient's height is at least 4 feet 7 inches. Now let's add the fractional inches to complete the patient's height. Step 4. Find the fractional inch closest to the indicator line. In this case, it is 3 quarters of an inch. Step 5. Finally, add the fractional lines to your answer. In this case, the patient's height is 4 foot 7 and 3 quarters of an inch. Now it's your turn. Determine the height indicated on the height rod. I'll leave the steps there for you for the first one. You may pause the video and play when you're ready for the answer. If you stated 4 foot 
nine and a quarter of an inch, you are correct. Now try it without the steps in view. What is the height indicated on the height rod? If you stated five feet and a half an inch, you are correct. As you have noticed, knowing the multiples of 12 is very important. Don't get caught counting on your fingers. Document the patient's height quickly and accurately. And there you have it. You have learned to interpret the calibration markings on the adjustable height rod of a physician mechanical beam scale and determine the height indicated on the height rods with and without the number of feet indicated on the rod. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to click the like button. To stay up to date on other great allied health learning tools, subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter at AHTools1. This is Josh Farkison and thank you for viewing this video.